Five great games, two huge upsets, and some unforgettable individual performances. The 2012 ANZ Championship is underway as I say hello and welcome to Centre Pass, the official video podcast of the ANZ Championship. Dan Ryan here alongside netballing legend Sherelle McMahon. Sherelle, welcome along, and what a way to open the season for 2012. I know, what an incredible start. We had some really big upsets, some really close games, and some teams who showed some fantastic form um, early in this season. Well, let's have a look at all of the results from round one of the ANZ Championship. Of course, it kicked off on Saturday afternoon with the Adelaide Thunderbirds defeating the New South Wales Swifts by 17 goals. The Melbourne Vixens causing the first boil over of the season, taking the Queensland Firebirds down 47 to 42. The Mystics just getting over the line against the Central Pulse 51 to 47. Another upset over in New Zealand in Invercargill, the Southern Steel 49 winners over the Magic 47 and the West Coast Fever 20 goal winners over the Canterbury Tactics to round out the opening round of the competition. Shrell, let's start with the first game of the season, the Adelaide Thunderbirds up against the New South Wales Swifts. 25 goals at half time and then it was the Thunderbirds that blew it out in the second half. Yeah, it really was. Obviously, this was a Thunderbirds lineup which has been strengthened particularly in their defensive lineup. So I was watching with interest with Beck Bully and how she'd go against her old side in the Swifts and I think she kind of took a little bit of time to find her feet but once she did it in that second half, um, she was brilliant and um, so was Renee Hallen and intercepts from everywhere. She, they, they seem to have really formed a, a nice combination early in the season. Carla Borrego, 41 goals as well. A huge game was Sunday afternoon, the Melbourne Vixens up against the Queensland Firebirds. Fair to say not many people thought that the Vixens could get over the line against the Firebirds, but Julie Hornwig yeah, made some terrific coaching deal. moves and what a debut from young Karen Howarth at goal attack. 26 goals, 5 uh, rebounds, an outstanding debut from, from her. Absolutely, as you say, not many people predicted that the Vixens would go up into the Firebirds home territory and pull off a win, but they did, they, and they did it with such confidence. There was a time partway through that second quarter where the Firebirds took out a bit of a league and lead, and Julie Hornweg made wholesale changes. Kate Beveridge, the only player in her original position, and um, great, great for the, the Vixens to pull it back from there with those changes. Fair to say that the Queensland Firebirds really miss Claire McMenamin. They would have wanted maybe a change in that defensive line, but without her, they don't have the depth that took them to the title last year. Well, that's exactly right. It just go, went to really show what a great combination that Claire McMenamin and Laura Geitz had last year and the ability to really contain any shooting combination. So, uh, yeah, it will be really interesting to see how the Firebirds respond to that. Moving on to our next game, Sherelle. The Northern Mystics, of course, last year's runner-up against the Central Pulse. This was a very tight game. Much improved the Central Pulse from last year. They led throughout the game, but also the Mystics had leads as well. So it was a very topsy-turvy game, but in the end, a four-goal win to the Mystics. Yeah, and I actually have predicted last week that the Mystics will be my top side for the entire year, and I actually thought that they would uh, pull this game out quite easily. Um, I was interested in the combination of, of uh, George and Clark in, in the centre court positions. I thought their win attack centre combinations was a little stronger than when Clark was on wing defence. Um, they did just pull it out but I'm loving Pulse, loving that they're really putting some pressure on what is probably going to be one of the top sides this year. No Anna Scarlett for the Northern Mystics in the opening round and Maria Tutaya benched at three quarter time as well. So interesting times for the Northern Mystics. Another big game, Sherelle, Monday night netball, the Southern Steel. Now this is a team that seriously no one thought they would knock off the Magic in the opening round. An absolute inspired performance yeah. from them. Two gold winners against the Magic. Definitely the Steel only three plays from last year so to be able to come down from a six goal deficit at three quarter time uh, against what is a really settled strong lineup in the Magic was, was amazing when they've only got three players from last season and as you mentioned Donna Wilkins only a couple of months after giving birth and she's out there absolutely carving it up so great performance by them. Yeah notable mention too of young Storm Purvis an 18 year old goalkeeper for the Steel that got the job at three quarter time to come on and play against Irene Van Dyke and pulled in some incredible intercepts and rebounds at crucial stages. Moving on to our next game, Sherelle. The final game of the round was the West Coast Fever up against the Canterbury Tactics in Perth. The biggest winning margin for the opening round, 20 goals to the Fever. Uh, great start by the Fever. Coach Norma Plummer over there would be extremely excited and um, again, another nice combination in Cox and Bassett. Um, the Tactics were a little bit uh, down on their defensive lineup with some injuries but um, they were very impressive and I've just got a feeling that they're going to be very <laughs> tough to contain this season. Well, let's have a look.
look at the ladder after the opening round of the competition, Sherelle. And there you have it, the West Coast Fever sitting on top of the ladder. First time in the history of the league, I might add, that they are in that pole position and expect them to stay there potentially if they go well this next weekend. The Adelaide Thunderbirds are in second, the Vixens and the Mystics rounding out the top four, and of course the Southern Steel, the other winner in the opening round there in fifth. The Tactics down there in tenth place. Sherelle, each week we're going to have a performance of the week or a performer of the week. Who was the performance for you in round one of the ANZ Champs? Well, I know you're probably going to say I'm a little bit biased <laughs> with my old side, but I've got to point out the Vixens as a real highlight for me. I was up in Brisbane and saw it live. Um, it was an incredible team performance with all the changes that happened and um, that they responded incredibly well. And Karen Howard was, was a real standout for me and caused some huge problems for the really great uh, Firebirds lineup in defence. Well, the performer of the round for me is Donna Wilkins from the Southern Steel, 33 years of age, only 12 weeks after having her third child. She scored 33 goals from 35 at 94% mm. against the likes of Casey Williams and Liana De Bruyne. Yep. Great for the Steel to have her back, great for the league. She's just an ultra competitor and had an outstanding opening round of the competition. Well, Sherelle, let's now have a look at all of the games coming up in round two of the ANZ Championship. It'll start on Saturday with the Pulse taking on the Steel in Napier. The Firebirds will be looking to redeem themselves against the Adelaide Thunderbirds in Brisbane. The Fever hosts the Melbourne Vixens. An all New Zealand clash with the Magic taking on the Mystics and the Tactics taking on the Swifts in Christchurch on Monday night. Sure, let's have a quick look at the Central Pulse up against the Southern Steel. Robin Braunton, of course, the new coach of the Pulse, going up against her old team, the Steel. Very hard game to predict. Definitely, and, and her old side who have co-coaches now, which is a little bit of a difference um, that we haven't seen before. And the two standouts, the two surprise packages from the first uh, round um, in both of these sides. So really, really tough to call, but um, should be should be a great game. Feature game will be on Sunday. The Queensland Firebirds up against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Fair to say the Firebirds pretty vulnerable coming into this game and the Thunderbirds will be looking to pounce, no doubt. Definitely. I can't wait to see how the Firebirds respond. I read with interest some of the comments that Natalie Medhurst made after the game against the Vixens and she was incredibly disappointed with not only the result but the way they went about their netball. So I, I think that uh, we'll see a much more fired up Firebirds um, on the weekend. And um, But the, the Thunderbirds, great performance early. So another really tough game to pick. Yeah, it should be great to see that one. Another interesting game will be played in Perth on Sunday as well. The West Coast Fever hosting the Melbourne Vixens. One of these teams is going to have a cracking start to the season, but probably arguably the first real test for the West Coast Fever to see where they stand in this competition. Yeah, I think that that's, that's definitely true. And, um, you know, that they've got the top position on the ladder for the first time ever, which would be absolutely thrilling for them. Um, but the Vixens, I think with the defensive combinations they've got, um, it'll be interesting to see who they put where. That We saw some changes on the weekend against the Firebirds. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what matchups they have against Cox and Bassett in particular. There'll be a lot of interest in New Zealand in the match between the Magic and the Mystics, arch rivals from the very start of this competition. Both of them want to be the number one New Zealand ranked team. Yes. A big ask for the Magic to back up against the Mystics, but if they don't win that game, they're going to have a pretty disastrous start to this season. They are, and one that probably not many people picked uh, for the Magic if they lose this second game to be 0-2 and two for the start of the season. So uh, they'll be looking on some of their really experienced players to, to step up and, and be able to, I don't know, put, hold on to things when, when things aren't going so well in that last quarter. The pressure came on and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they, they respond after that. Final game of the round will be the Canterbury Tactics hosting the New South Wales Swift. Mm. This will be an interesting game because, of course, the Swifts really died in the second half against mm. the Thunderbirds. The Tactics showed plenty of promise but had the biggest losing margin of the opening round. The Tactics generally go quite well against mm. the Swiss when they play at home. The, the Swiss will really want to respond from this. They've, they've had some massive changes to their lineup, uh, and I think that that possibly showed in that first round. But potentially after having that little settling game in the first round, they, they might pull things together. But a tough one, second up over in New Zealand. Well, Sherelle, we're going head-to-head -head this year in a tipping competition. We, we both got three <laughs> last week. Of course, we didn't tip the Steel, and we didn't tip uh, also the Vixens as oh, well. So uh, we'll learn our lesson, hopefully, for this round. Who are your tips for round two? OK, well, my tips are uh, the Pulse to win against the Steel, just the Firebirds to win against the Thunderbirds by a little bit of a bigger margin, the Vixens over the Fever, probably just, that'll be a tight one, the Mystics over the Magic, and the Tactics at home over the Swifts. All right, Sherelle, I'm going with the Steel to beat the Pulse, the Thunderbirds to just get over the line against a vulnerable Firebirds. I'm tipping the Vixens to be too good for the Fever in Perth, the Mystics over the Magic, and the Swifts just over the Tactics. So it will be a very interesting round in round two.
Well, that's all we have time for on this week's edition of Centre Pass. We hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you jump on and follow the ANZ Champs on Facebook and Twitter. Also, get online to the 10 Sport website and, of course, the Sky Sport website in New Zealand. Lots of news, video, content, and, of course, then Remote Fantasy Netball is there as well. Sean McMahon, thank you very much for joining us as well. No problem. And make sure you check your local guides for all of the broadcast details for Round 2 of the ANZ Championship. We look forward to joining you again next week. Until then, goodbye for now. Centre Pass is proudly brought to you by our principal sponsor, associate sponsors, support sponsors and suppliers, and broadcast partners.